Okay, I'm entering the studio of Bozo. And I was in the audience here when I was just a lad, uh, five years old, back in 1961. There's Bozo. Pretty cool, huh? This is the studio where the Bozo show was aired. And we'd be sitting up there in like the bleachers. There's like a balcony up there, I believe. There's the curtain, there's the stage. Actually, I think we were out there. Yeah, we come in through the door and the camera aim up here because there's the curtain up there. And uh, wow, so this is my first time seeing that Bozo thing. Okay, but I've been in this studio before. There we go, this is the WGN Studios, man. And there you see Bozo, another Bozo right there. And see, it says right there, the Bozo Super Sunday Show. Yeah, that's when it went to just Sundays. Because it used to be on every weekday. My brother played the grand prize game. He got picked. He got up to number three. And then he missed on four. He started trying, you know. Poor Phil. He's the one who gave me the ride today to get here at WGN. He gives me a ride every year. And there you see the time on deck. It is 8.06, 8.07 a.m. Okay, Chicago Central Time. I got in my nice hot Java, my Dr. Swab Java. Ah, that's good Java. My friends wanted me to mention their zombie movie, but you know, I don't have time to plug your movies. I'm here because I'm a guest. They want me to talk about my movies. There was no time to give any plugs for anybody. That's not why I'm here. So a few people think, oh yeah, we're going to rock. We want you to plug our movie. Uh, mention us. One lady says, can you plug FedEx? Can you plug FedEx because you mailed your package to WGN from FedEx? I'm like, I can't mention FedEx. You know, let FedEx promote FedEx. You know, if you're going to promote, you got to promote yourself. you got to earn it. I've been writing letters to WGN for three and a half years, and they finally called me back. Hey, how's it going? Hi. All right. What's, that's uh, Nina, Dina Bear. How's it going? What's it like meeting David the Rock Nelson? Hey, David. What's I'm the guy that makes buddy? monster movies. Yeah, pretty good. Anyway... But I wrote them for three and a half years, and that's why I got called back by Larry Potash to be on the show, because I kept writing them and writing them and promoting myself. That's what you got to do, too. Nobody's going to promote you for you. You have to pay the price. You have to write the letters. You have to promote yourself if you're going to get known. And that goes for all you out there. You got to pay the price. You can't just say, hey, can you mention me? Can you say hi to Sean? Or can you say hi to Dan or whoever your name is? I don't do that on the show. I don't even say hi to mom. That's what the, that's what the, the guys on for the first time do, but not me. You know, if you're going to get known, man, you have to promote yourself. You have to write letters. You have to make Xerox copies of photos, and you have to send that out to people. That's the only way you get known. And you've got to keep doing it and doing it no matter what anybody says. And if you give up, then you're a quitter, then you're a wuss. You, oh, my movie didn't make it to the big time. You know, you think you're going to make a thousand bucks just like that. You want to make fast money. You know why I make money? Because I keep my bait in the water. That's what Joe Boyd said. You know why Rock is so successful, why David's so successful? My name was Ura back then, my Marine name. Was because he said, Ura keeps his bait in the water. Well, now they call me The Rock because I used to box and I make monster movies. But my boxing coach, Greg Oziosmic, called me The Rock in 1989 over breakfast. He said, call yourself The Rock. The Rock. There's a lot of Rockies, but there's only one The Rock. Not just Rock, but The Rock. He said, that's you. Sure it is. Dwayne Rock Johnson came up about a couple of years after that. Like in 92, I heard about him. I was given the name in 89. But anyway, by Greg Oziosmic, my boxing coach from uh, Greg Oziosmic, who graduated from Maine South in 74. I graduated in 75. Anyway, okay, but I just want to say something. If you want to get known, you've got to keep writing the letters, promote yourself on the Internet. Right? I wrote handwritten letters, and they worked. You know what's good about handwritten letters? They're personal. It's not just a copied letter you sent off to everybody, the same thing. That's not personalized. People appreciate personalized letters. And when you write a special note to them, a couple sentences, they appreciate that. So that helps. Don't just, you know, just send the same copied letter to everybody. They know that you just ran off a copy. But they appreciate the extra time you put in. That's, that's how I got known, man. I personalized my letters. And I'd send pictures, like Xerox pictures of my movies. That's right, and I kept doing it even when my mom said quit, even when my friends said quit. I kept making these monster movies because it's what I wanted to do, and that's what you got to do. You can't quit ever, or you can't wuss out just because not, not everybody likes your movie. Oh, they, it didn't win an Academy Award. Well, it's not going to win an Academy Award. 
You will not win an Academy Award. You got to keep doing it for years and years like Steven Spielberg. That's why he won Academy Awards because he didn't quit. He kept with it for decades. And then he started making good movies. Like Duel was a masterpiece. Duel is my favorite Steven Spielberg movie. And that was his first major movie. That is, I like that better than I like Jaws. I like it better than, I like, I like it better than I like Jurassic Park. But Jurassic Park is probably his best movie. Okay, so see, you gotta hang in there and that's how you get known. You can't, don't compare yourself with Spielberg. That's not fair. He's been doing this much longer than you. Just be yourself. Just do your vision, do your thing, and be the best you you can be. Don't compare yourself with anybody else because that's not right. That's not fair. Those who compare themselves among themselves are not wise. That's what the good book, the Bible says. Amen. That's good preaching. I, amen, Brother Rock. That's good preaching. I know good preaching when I hear it. Okay, I better keep it down because they're doing the show. Okay, I, I don't want to cause a disturbance here. Okay, that's Terry. How's it going, man? Doing good. Yeah, I'm giving my pep talk. See, some of these filmmakers think, oh, my movie's going to win an Academy Award. It's not going to be like Rock's movie. My movie's going to be a blockbuster. No, it's not. You're going to be just like me. Your first movie's going to get criticized. You better, you know, you better, you better toughen up, man. Quit being a wuss. Oh, oh, I want my first picture to get an award. You don't have to win an award. Are you doing what you like? Are you happy with it? Then that's what counts. Then just... Do it because you love it, not to win an award. If you do it to win an award or to get rich, you're just going to say, oh, wow, I made a million bucks. I guess I can quit now. You're not going to make a million bucks on your first movie. You might make a couple bucks, but you got it's how you promote it. It doesn't have to be the best movie in the world. I don't care if Ebert He's shoots it down. the best promoter ever. Yeah, I don't care if, if the major critics like Ebert, those guys shoot down your movie. He doesn't like sci-fi movies that much. Love this guy. He, he doesn't like the Charles Bronson Death Wish 3. He gave it like one and a half stars. I gave that movie four stars or five. That's my favorite. I told Charles Bronson, it's my favorite movie you did. I wrote him a letter about two years before he died. He didn't write me back, but I told him Death Wish was my favorite movie. He might have never read the letter, but I told him Death Wish 3 is my favorite of your movies. That rocks. And I wanted to be an extra in Death Wish 5 down in Canada. I would have gone out there, but I found out about it too late. I would have gone all the way to Canada just to be an extra in that Charles Bronson movie. I would have paid my own way down there. But, you know, I just want to say something. You know, those kind of movies get shot down. Like John Carpenter's Vampires got, you know, a bad reviews. It lasted a week in the theaters. But that was my favorite John Carpenter movie. John Carpenter is still strong. He was kicking tail with vampires kicked butt, man. That's, I think that's his best movie. You know, people say, oh, the thing. No, you know, the reason people don't know about it is because they don't go to the movies. When they heard that movie, was out, it, it, was, it was on Jay Leno. James Woods was on Jay Leno talking about it. They showed a preview of it on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. So, I mean, if you didn't know about vampires, you know, you haven't been keeping up because that was John Carpenter's big movie for 1998. I saw that movie 21 times at the theater. I went to the second run theaters. I see it like five times a week for a dollar seven guy. Every night I watched it. And that movie inspired me, and I wanted to make my own like vampire waster movie. So I play rock vampire waster, and I filmed it, and I waste vampires over there, down kind of, kind of near Elston and North Avenue, near the Exit nightclub, and over by Delilah's. I filmed inside of Delilah's wasting vampires because they let me film in there, over there in Lincoln and Diversity, wow. Delilah's bar, Delilah's Chicago. You know, like Samson and Delilah. You know, yeah, yeah she's the one to cut his hair, and he lost his strength. Yeah. But, you know, I don't, my strength is not in my hair. I like short hair because I'm a Marine. I want to look like a man. Right Samson was different because he was, uh, back then it was different. He was God's man and his strength was in his hair, but not ours. Men should have short wear hair. Women should have long hair. Amen, brother. Got a boxing question. Amen. Oh, okay, he's got a boxing question. Yes, okay. Where, did you know any place in the city, in uh, Chicago, where we could do, uh, uh, where there's a good uh, boxing ring? My wife is actually in the, in the, in the boxing, and wonder if it's like, do you have, do you, do you uh, practice or? Do well, you know not anymore. Or? I used to train in Humboldt Park with Johnny Hurricane Hurd, oh, who was wow. the number three middleweight in the world. I had just sent him a DVD of all the videos I took of him because he's in some of my monster movies. I sent him a video of everything I had about him. I filmed him sparring with my movie camera wow. at, at uh, <laughs> over at the Windy City Gym before they closed us back like in 1989, 1988. So I, he's sparring with this guy, beating this young guy. He was like 50 years old, and he's beating this guy. You know, he, he's, he, had, he had muscles. But now he's got a cane. He's like in, in his 70s. Sure. Yeah. So he can't walk too good. Uh, and his voice is scratchy from all those years of shouting. But, so, yeah, but that gym closed down. Yeah. They, I think they tore down that field house, too. 
So I can't really tell you, but there's a guy named Glenn Friedman who I boxed, and I think it's Larry's sparring partner. Larry Potash might be able to tell you, he'll tell you where that gym, because he spars with Glenn Friedman, who I boxed oh, once okay. at Navy Pier at a boxing show wow. in 1988. Oh. Glenn Friedman, when he was 10 pounds heavier, he was over, he like five, seven inches taller than me. He took him on, huh? Yeah, and he was the Golden Gloves runner up, and he was the uh, Chicago Park District champ, light heavyweight. He was a whole weight class, he was like 175, I was like 160, so he calls me up, he says, yeah, I think it'd be a good fight, I want to fight you. So, but I have, you know, I fight anybody. I fought James Flowers, who outweighed me by 25 pounds. Oh, my God. He didn't challenge me, it's just that there was nobody else left for me to fight. There was only one guy left that wasn't fighting anybody, because he couldn't find an opponent, and I couldn't find an opponent. They said, well, you want to fight each other? And I said, I don't know, he's a little bit big for me. He says, don't worry, I won't hurt you, man, I'll, I'll go light on you. But I put up a good fight. I got a tie. I got a draw with James Flowers. And he trains kids now at Crane High School. And he was a pro heavyweight. He turned pro and he won the Illinois State light heavyweight title in the pros. He beat Tony LaRock La Rosa. Wow. Yeah, 10 round decision over there at the amphitheater. I saw it. I was rooting him on. About 30% of the crowd, a small section, was rooting on for Flowers. The rest of the crowd was all rooting for, you know, the Italian stallion Tony LaRock La Rosa. Always a good to see you. But Flowers beat him, man, won the Illinois State title. And I got a tie with him only like two years earlier. Yeah, in a parking lot of a church in display. I'll see you.